Hi, this is Shadi and this video is long overdue. This video is about the art of Partitsu, uh, a very beautiful and elegant art uh, combining judo, jujitsu, wrestling, fencing, boxing, and many other forms. So this video will talk about the founder a little bit, how he founded the school and the fall of the school and the last 20 years or so and how it had like a rebirth in the interest of Bartitsu and a revival in Bartitsu. So um, first let's talk a little bit about the history of it. So Sir Edward William Barton Wright, who was an Englishman who spent three years living in Japan. He went back to England and wanted to form a new art of self-defense after training multiple forms of martial arts. He trained in Japan uh, in the art of Jiu-Jitsu, particularly the Shinden Fudo Ryu Jiu-Jitsu. And in the West, he had studied boxing, fencing, French boxing, which is Savat, and of course, wrestling. So. He wanted to create what he had called new art of self-defense and he immediately started to write or create his own syllabus that would work against tough guys in the streets um, and he would test it against very tough people which he would invite and try to test his own uh, skills. He started to write for Pearson's magazines and many others so basically he started to use the media in order to market his school and he wanted to say that there is a lot of um, Kodokan Judo in it, uh, Jiu Jitsu, British boxing, Swiss wrestling, or the art of Schwingen, and of course, um, Lacan, meaning the, um, the stick fighting, and Savat, which is French boxing. So he was really trying to put it uh, in the mainstream and trying to say that it has everything in it. Uh, in order to make it not only a great uh, for marketing or you know to get people to come but also to show people that it is the best form of self-defense that you can train and keep in mind back then you know the interest in jiu-jitsu or what they call back then Japanese wrestling was very much um, on the rise and a lot of people were making these little films and instructionals of old jiu-jitsu as you see from the old footage that i use so let's talk a little bit about the club so between 1899 and 1902 uh, he wanted to publicize his art like i said through magazine articles and uh, interviews and demonstrations so he created his own bartitsu club uh, which was um, in Soho and there he would you know invite people and train people and he would get um, foreigners uh, to teach uh, at first he invited Kaneo Tani not to be confused with Yukio Tani and Seizo Yamamoto and of course 19 year old Yukio Tani to travel to London uh, and that was uh, under the supervision of none other than Kano Jigoro, the founder of Kodokan uh, Judo. So, um, so which, which tells me one thing, Yukio Tani was in the Yataro Handa school as well as Sadakazu Uyenishi. Um, there, a lot of people say, what kind of Ryu was it? Uh, you only had Mataemon Tanabe who came from the Fuzen Ryu, but everything else since Kano Jigoro gave them uh, easily second dan and third dan after he turned them into Kodokan Judokas tells me that they were following the syllabus of the Kodokan um, the techniques, uh, the gi, the demonstrations you would see it just says, you know, it looks almost, well not almost, 100% like Kodokan Judo even their books that I have uh, shared with you all of them share Kodokan Judo techniques, the Kuzushi, how they gripped everything which tells me that the Ataro Honda school really followed the um, Kodokan blueprint including Fuzen Ryu master uh, Mataemon Tanabe. So uh, Kaneo Tani and Seizo Yamamoto left and there was only Sadakazu Uyenishi Yukio Tani still training and of course the wrestler Pierre Vini, uh, Swiss master Pierre Vigny and of course Armand Cherpilot who was also a wrestler teaching at the club. So later on Uyenishi 
and Yukio Tani became the like the leaders of the club teaching jiu-jitsu and many others came and taught at the club of various forms of arts like uh, fencing, uh, boxing and savat. So uh, it's a wide range of arts that he wanted to include, like I said, to make it the best form of self-defense. Now let's talk about his philosophy of self-defense. He encouraged the members of his club to learn uh, all four major uh, hand-to-hand combat styles uh, taught at the club which I mentioned before uh, in order to make them work he would say that learn them on the, uh, each individually and then put them face to face with the other types of uh, disciplines mainly so what his, his idea was that you would develop strategies against savat against boxing against you know fencing against jiu-jitsu um, wrestling so he from using other styles against each other and then blending everything together. So this was like the um, first uh, evidence of cross-training or modern cross-training like we do today. You see people training, uh, I do boxing, I do jiu-jitsu, I do judo, etc. So uh, this was the idea of Barton Wright, but he, he created them all in just one club before um, the philosophy of Bruce Lee, before the philosophy of MMA, uh, all these things. He was like one of the pioneers of modern cross-training, So, which is really you know, in my opinion, it's a shame that the school only lasted for three years. So uh, in the mid-1902, the club was no longer active, barely any students in it. Um, the the reasons for its closing is still unknown till this day, but uh, William Garou, which later taught the women for the uh, Sufra Gets, which I talked about them in the past, these uh, rebel group of women. He said that uh, the prices were way too high for people to uh, afford and thus people started to drop out. So it was mainly like a very high prestigious club that they wanted to portray. And it's uh, in a way it really backfired. So um, and also Barton Wright had overestimated the number of rich people uh, living in London that wanted to have uh, or that had an interest in self-defense. So uh, that was mainly it. And after that, the um, uh, teachers Yenishi and Yukiotani went on through Europe and did their uh, demonstrations and also participated in professional wrestling. Uh, what really helped preserve this particular legacy up until recently where people wanted to revive it was actually through Sherlock Holmes. Sir, uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle actually wrote in his stories talking about the adventure of the empty house back in 1903. He talked about um, the use of, he wrote it as Baritsu uh, uh, of the Japanese system of wrestling and the gentleman stick fighting and you know he was basically describing the art of Bartitsu and pugilism being in it in the mix you watch uh, Sherlock Holmes in the movies um, this is what truly kept it alive was actually the novel of uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. If it wasn't for that, there would be no interest um, in the last 20 years. So um, so recently, let's talk about the interest and in revival. So in 2001, um, the Journal of Martial Arts and Sciences started to republish the old articles of uh, Barton Wright that he wrote in, 19, in 1899 up until 1901 uh, in the British Library and they really preserved them and they tr really tried to create, recreate the syllabus of uh, Barton Wright and try to create um, what he had achieved, all the, the memoirs that he had wrote from 1899 up until 1902, and they wanted to create what is known as like a Neo Bartitsu, um, to create the old, recreate the old syllabus and try to really um, push it uh, to the next step or maybe like uh, evolve it in a sense, because it's a little bit, uh, reflective of its time which is the Edwardian slash Victorian era and now it's a new time so um, in 2011 they produced a new DVD talking uh, I'm sorry the new documentary called Bartitsu the lost martial art of Sherlock Holmes um, and then they talk about history and not only that the new forms of Bartitsu schools that are um, 
pretty much alive like the Bartitsu Society, the Bartitsu Club of New York, and the Bartitsu Club in general. So um, these are like there is still Bartitsu alive. Obviously, it's not um, the same lineage that was created by uh, Barton Wright, but nonetheless, it was revived um, by studying Barton Wright. So it is pretty much close. So if you have anything else to add, please let me know down below. Also, consider supporting me on Patreon. I have exclusive content for the patrons only. And please do not forget to check out Josh Simon's shop for historical articles about PJJ and historical t-shirts. This was Shady and thank you for listening.